Hello everyone! Welcome back to our math room. In this video, we are going to have a lesson in general math made easy with teacher John. And the topic is all about applications of logarithmic functions. Here are the learning objectives. At the end of the lesson, you should be able to represent real-life situations using logarithmic functions and solve problems involving logarithmic functions. Logarithmic functions have a wide range of applications in the real world, and here are the common applications. We have the compound interest, exponential growth and decay, pH level of a substance, earthquake magnitude, and sound intensity. So why use logarithms? Logarithmic scale is practically useful to deal with large range of values. So in this video, we will be exploring some of these many applications of logarithms in the real world. Let's begin with the compound interest. Mrs. De La Cruz plans to make an investment in a bank. If she would invest 50,000 in a bank with an 8% interest compounded quarterly, in how many years will her money be tripled assuming that there is no additional deposit or withdrawals to be made? In compound interest, we are following the formula A, which stands for the future value or ending amount, is equal to P, the principal or the beginning amount, times 1 plus the R, which is the interest rate, over N, which refers to the number of compounding periods in a year, raised to the power of N times T, where T refers to the number of years. Going back to our problem, we need to list down the given values. So let's begin with the value of P, which is the principal value, and that is 50,000. The rate is 8%, so in decimal, it is now 0.08. N refers to the number of compounding periods. It says in the problem, compounded quarterly, so N is 4. We also have the future value, which is 150,000, taken from the word triple. So 50,000 times 3 is equal to 150,000. And the question is, the number of years. The money will be tripled, so T is a note. So the next thing to do is just to simply substitute these given values to our formula. So we now have 150,000 is equal to 50,000 times 1 plus 0 0.08 over 4 raised to the power of 4 times t. The first thing to do is to divide both sides by 50,000. Then afterwards, simplify the following values here. So we will now have 3 is equal to 1.02 raised to the power of 4 times t. So since we are looking for the value of t, this is now the time to apply the logarithm. So we need to take the logarithm of both sides. So we have the logarithm of 3 is equal to the logarithm of 1.02 raised to the power of 4 times t. Now, we can apply the power rule. So in power rule, this exponent 4t will now be placed beside the word log. So it will now become logarithm of 3 is equal to the 4t logarithm of 1.02. Now, to look for the value of t, we need to divide both sides by 4 and logarithm of 1.02. So it will now become t is equal to the logarithm of 3 over for logarithm of 1.02 and this is equal to or has approximate value of 13.87. So we can now conclude that it takes approximately 14 years for the amount of 50,000 to be tripled with an interest of 8% compounded quarterly. Let us now have the second application, the radioactive decay. Suppose that the half-life of a certain radioactive substance is 10 days and there are 980 grams initially, how many days will it take for the amount of substance to be 123 grams? In radioactive decay, we are following the formula P of T, which is the future amount of substance at time T, 
is equal to the P sub 0, which is the initial amount of substance, times 1 half, which represents the half-life, raised to T, which is the time over the half-time. Solving this problem, let us first list down the given values. We have the P sub 0, which is 980 grams, P of T, which is 123 grams, H is 10 days, and T is unknown. Substitute these given values to our formula, we now have 123 is equal to 980 times 1 half raised to the power of t over 10. The first thing to do here is to divide both sides by 980. So we have 0 0.12551020 by dividing 123 and 980 is equal to 1 half raised to the power of t over 10. Since we are looking for the value of t which is found in the exponent, we need to take the logarithm of both sides. So we now have the logarithm of 0 0.12551020 is equal to t over 10 applying the power rule times the logarithm of 1 half or 0 0.5. Next is since we're looking for the t value, we need to divide both sides by logarithm of 0 0.5. So we will be having this logarithm of 0 0.12551020 divided by logarithm of 0 0.5. So the next thing to do is to remove the 10 from the denominator here. So we need to multiply both sides by the value of 10. By doing that, the 10 on the right side will be removed and there will be 10 to be multiplied on the left side. So it will become like this. After that, you need to get the value or the quotient of this. Then afterwards, multiply it to 10 and the result is 29.94. So it takes approximately 30 days for the radioactive substance to be 123 grams. The third application of logarithm is to find the pH level of a substance. It is used to measure the acidity of a substance or the water-based solution and is defined by pH is equal to the negative logarithm of the concentration of hydrogen ions in moles per liter. In the pH scale, it is acidic if the pH level is less than 7, it is neutral if the pH level is equal to 7, and it is alkaline if the pH level is greater than 7. Here is the example in finding the pH level. The hydrogen ion concentration of a certain type of milk is about 1.6 times 10 raised to negative 7 moles per liter. What is the pH level? Following the formula in finding the pH level, we have this solution pH is equal to the negative logarithm of 1.6 times 10 raised to negative 7. Get the value of this and it is equivalent to pH is equal to 6.80. Looking at the value 6.80, it is less than 7. Therefore, this is a CD. So we can now conclude that the pH level of a certain type of milk is 6.80 and is considered acidic. Let us now have another example. The average pH of an ocean near the surface is around 8.1. What is its hydrogen concentration? Following the same formula, we have the solution 8.1 since the pH is provided is equal to the negative logarithm of the hydrogen concentration, which is unknown. Here, we need to remove the negative so we multiply both sides by negative, so we now have negative 8.1 is equal to the logarithm of the hydrogen concentration. Since we have the log here and we are looking for the value of hydrogen concentration, we need to rewrite this in exponential form. Since the base here is 10, it will now become 10 raised to negative 8.1 is equal to the hydrogen concentration. And this is equivalent to approximately 7.94 times 10 raised to negative 9. So we can now conclude that the hydrogen concentration of an ocean near the surface is 7.94 times 10 raised to negative 9 
moles per liter. Let us now go to the fourth application, the earthquake magnitude. The magnitude M of an earthquake is measured by the Richter scale. The Richter scale was developed by Charles Richter in 1935. It is a logarithmic scale used in measuring the magnitude of an earthquake defined by M is equal to the logarithm of I over I sub zero, where I is the intensity measure of the earthquake and I sub zero is equal to one, which is the minimum intensity or the standard low level of earthquake, wherein the movement can barely be detected. Let us have an example. If an earthquake has an intensity of 107.8, what is its magnitude on the Richter scale? So following the formula, we have the solution m is equal to the logarithm of 107.8, which is the intensity level of the earthquake, divided by the minimum level of intensity, which is 1. So we have m is equal to the logarithm of 107.8, which is equivalent to 2.03. So we can now conclude that an earthquake with an intensity of 107.8 has 2.03 magnitude, which is slightly felt, meaning to say it causes minor damages. Another example. In April 22 of 2019, PVOX recorded an earthquake in Zambales with a magnitude of 6.1. What is its intensity? So following the same formula, we have this solution. The magnitude is provided, which is 6.1, equals the logarithm of I, which is the unknown, the intensity of the earthquake, divided by the minimum intensity, which is 1. Next is to simplify, we have 6.1 is equal to the logarithm of i. Change this to exponential form to find the i value. So the base here in logarithm is 10, so we have i is equal to 10 raised to 6.1. Simplifying this, we have the value of 11,258,925. So we can now conclude that the earthquake in Sambales with a magnitude of 6.1 has an intensity of 11,258,925. The last application is the sound intensity. Loudness is measured in decibels. So here is the decibel scale. In acoustics, the sound loudness level in decibel is given by dB is equal to 10, the logarithm of I over I sub zero, where I is the intensity of the measured sound in watts per meter squared, and I sub zero is equal to 1 times 10 raised to negative 12 watts per meter squared is the least audible sound a human can hear. Mean to say, this is the reference intensity where the sound can barely be perceived. Let us have an example. What is the sound intensity in decibels if the intensity measured is 2.5 times 10 raised to negative 2 watts per meter squared? Second question, how much more intense is this sound than the least audible sound a human can hear? So answering the first one, we have to follow the formula dB is equal to 10, the logarithm of I over I sub 0. The given here is the I value, which is the 2.5 times 10 raised to negative 2 watts per meter squared. So we have this. Simplifying this one, we have 103.9794. So we can now conclude that the sound intensity is approximately 104 decibels. So answering letter B, how much more intense is this sound in letter A? than the least audible sound a human can hear. Since we are now comparing two sounds, we need to get the ratio of this two, which is given by I over I sub zero. So we have 2.5 times 10 raised to 10, which is equivalent to 25 billion. So what is the meaning of this? This means that 104 decibels is 25 billion times more intense than the least audible sound a human can hear. So what are the key takeaways? 
In this lesson, take note that logarithmic functions have a wide range of applications in the real world. It often utilizes to solve problems involving interest of an investment, exponential growth and decay, pH level of a substance, earthquake magnitude, sound intensities, and other scientific observations wherein the logarithmic scale is useful to deal with large range of values. Here is the end of our discussion. I hope you have learned a lot about the applications of logarithmic functions. Please don't forget to like and comment in this video. Bye everyone! See you on our next video.